All right, Click Invest users, uh, I am very excited about this. We're, we're launching our first series. So it's going to be a four parter, um, four part series, just diving into all parts of the deal from acquiring the deal to prepping for the, you know, for when you start to the actual construction process. And then when you go and sell the property. Okay. There's a lot of information flying around in the space today. So I thought it'd be extremely valuable to bring on one of our top users who, I mean, a guy that's done over 500 rehab projects, um, has lived it and is still living it and, and working on his project still today. Um, goodness, I mean, acquiring deals, it seems like on a monthly basis. So Ron Plonis of Spirit Properties is going to be on and he's going to be leading this, this four part series that, uh, we know is going to bring tremendous value to the community and eliminate a lot of the fluff and just bring a lot of the truth, um, which is what everybody wants at the end of the day. So Ron, thank you for, for doing this and for being on, man. Yeah, no, I appreciate you having me here. It's uh, a great opportunity to help your community and uh, hopefully you know, share some of the things that we've learned to help some uh, people be more successful. Awesome, so a little bit about Ron. He's a real estate developer, investor, and advisor who helps seasoned and aspiring real estate investors methodically supplement or replace their current income by growing their real estate business. He's helped many investors and partners, institutional buyers, and hedge funds. So when you see that big word there, institutional buyers and hedge funds, that means he's bought and sold properties for Wall Street, okay? So he's worked with the big dogs, the guys that have bought thousands of properties nationally Ron has worked with those buyers and sellers. Um, he has produced anywhere from $30,000 to over $150,000 per month, spanning over 500 successful real estate projects. So again, I'm not coming to you with theories or uh, my ideas. I, I thought it would be best to bring the best of the best on and let him share his, uh, his knowledge and insight with us. So thanks again, man. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, this is going to be awesome. So deal to deposit series overview. So what does deal to deposit means? It means getting the deal, rehabbing it, and then selling it and depositing the check. That's the goal. At the end of the day, the goal is to make money and deposit a check. So week one, we're going to be talking about deal sourcing. So how to exploit the MLS and off-market sources to get deals. Week two is go time. So how to leverage the seller's time, which is going to be really interesting when he dives into this because I know a lot of guys don't think about this um, and set up your project or set your project up for success using month zero methods, which is something intense when he gets into that piece. Uh, week three, execution, how to manage the project from course, correcting, pre-marketing through the last mile and listing and or leasing. So it's not just about flipping. Ron has built a rental portfolio as well. And then week four, sales listing and leasing, how to deploy the right systems and partners when it's time to monetize your deal. A lot there. That's why it's going to be four parts. So week one, deal sourcing. Here's the summary. We're going to be focusing on MLS, Zillow, Redfin, Realtor.com, Click Invest, REO Brokers, um, investor-focused brokerage with systems, buying deals from wholesalers, getting your off-market deals to flip, keep or wholesale, market conditions, effort needed so um what market conditions effort needed yeah that's uh, just simply the relationship between um market conditions always change we've been in this here so we're catastrophic crash markets on the current market and you're really all it's always really the same bag of effort it's just a question of based on the market you're either spending more time in acquisitions or more time in sales or more time in construction or a combination thereof Awesome. Okay. So week one, deal sourcing. If you wouldn't mind, Ron, take it away. I've, I've yapped enough. Now it's nobody wants to hear me. They want to hear you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, this, this first part here is deal sourcing. And, and uh, there are just many uh, methods and promises and systems and things out there that um, can be used. I'm going to talk about the two that... Um, we mainly use. So there's open market listings um, and open market listings is real simple. It's somebody that's selling their house on the open market. So it's not uh, a lead or somebody that willing to to see if they want to sell their house or, uh, you know, probate listing or any of the 
off market things, it's open market listings. So the primarily most all of that data, when somebody decides to sell their house, they work with a broker. It's a licensed person to help you sell your house to put it on MLS, which I think is multiple listing service. And that's a common yep. across different states. And then there's different regions within states. But, you know, for our purposes, there's one MLS that serves almost the entire Chicagoland area. Um, and the, all that data is really people who have decided to sell their house and now they've listed it. Say my house is for sale and here's the price. Uh, could cool. be a bank, could be your aunt, it could be you because you're moving, it could be you, be, you because you want to move from a condo to, you know, a, a single family home in the suburbs. So that's become more and more accessible over the past 10 years with the advent of Zillow and Redfin. That's those are just consumer based systems. Everybody has access to them that pull data from the MLS and then also tax records to give you just, I mean, volumes of information. So it's really all the information about every house that's for sale. So somebody wants to sell their house, they'll engage a real estate broker. That real estate broker will then list it on the multiple listing service, the MLS, right? Right. MLS pushes that information to Zillow, Redfin, et cetera. So if you're going to one of those consumer sites, that information's getting pulled from the MLS. Yeah, and there's usually a, a slight delay. It's it's gotten much better over over the years. It's uh, r- really within hours now. It used to be you know overnight and, and things of that nature. But the the point is that everybody, um, regardless of their skill level or what partners they're choosing to work with, uh, partners being uh, wholesalers or realtors. We'll get into wholesalers in a in a minute, but. Um, Regardless of who they're working with, um, everybody has access to that information. So it needs to be screened. Uh, and that's really s- simple. I want to buy in Streamwood. I don't want to buy in South Holland. Those types of examples is just some of the high level screening that has to be done. And then um, it says manual underwriting there. But manual underwriting is really, uh, I know I have to buy a house for this type of discount in this area to have it make sense for me. And then after going through all those steps, uh, you can create contracts and send offers. So that that's really a a way that it can be done without working with a realtor, but it's very uh, time consuming and you're losing um, some efficiencies that a broker may have uh, their ability to get through all that information quickly and only send you 10 things a day, as opposed to, really the hundreds or thousands that you'd have to wade through on the uh, on the MLS or public access to the MLS like Zillow. Does okay. that make sense? Uh, yep. So that's an option. So um, you can you can go and look for those deals yourself. So you can go to Redfin or Zillow or Trulia if you don't have MLS access. And then you can set up your own searches. So if you only want to find deals right. in specific areas, you can set up those areas and price points. When Ron brought up discount, it's just like if you went to the store and you were buying something at a discount or a car or whatever. So you could set up your search and say, well, I know in Streamwood, you know, anything under 100,000 is something I want to look at. So you would just you would find out what those prices, what the max prices would have to be in every area. And then you would set that up and and you'd get emails of properties that fit your your discount, your discount. Yeah, absolutely. And you're going to be you're just basically going to be casting a very wide net uh, by using this system. And there's going to be a lot of work that you or somebody you're working with is going to have to, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, go through before you get to the point where you're sending offers. OK, and then and there's offers is really I, I have found a house. It's in Streamwood. It's one hundred thousand dollars. It's probably worth one eighty when it's done. I can get it rent ready uh, and still build some equity. I need to write a sales contract either myself or through a realtor to actually offer to that seller the price that you're hoping to pay for it. Okay. So on market listings, if you're doing it yourself, obviously a lot of work. Then there's, um, but it's an option. But it's an Um, option. So in, in the middle there, there's brokers and realtors who work with investors. So they're familiar with, okay, this guy likes this area with this type of discount. So all of that stuff that you can do manually yourself, there's um, brokers that have people that are constantly looking at the MLS. Uh, they'll have certain market expertise. Uh, you know, they might be an expert in South Holland. They might be an, uh, an expert in Streamwood. And that's important because 
when something comes up in Streamwood that's around $100,000, if you're a market expert and you know it's on uh, Main Street, you can tell I'm not a Streamwood expert because I don't know if they have a Main Street, but if it's on Main Street, you know you can pay up to X, but if it's on uh, Lily Drive, then you could pay up to Y. That's where the market expertise really comes into play. So it, it makes a lot of sense to work with brokers that have specialties in different regions or different areas because you'll be able to leverage their expertise to get you something that um, fits your criteria uh, in terms of where you'll buy, fits your criteria in terms of how much discount you need to make your business work, and then get it in your hands fast because <clears throat> it's an open market. So that means more participants means more competition. So uh, speed is important. So brokers with software, because I, I just, you've got so much knowledge and I, I do want to dive into the off market. Um, so if you could dive into this mm -hmm. and then we'll dive head first in the off market and spend the rest of our time there. All right, so there's um, brokers with software, and that's just uh, a fancy way. I mean, Click Invest is a true software, but there's other brokers with um, systems that they've built. But there's brokers with software that's designed for investors. So if you if you go back up to the top bullet point, we're talking about just access to data. The middle guy kind of specializes in investors um, or knows how to work with investors, but may also list uh, you know, like your house. You know, it has nothing to do with um, moving it, but it's a more of a marketing type service. But brokers with software um, for investors have, uh, I don't want to say go, gone all in, but have really dedicated their resources to buying properties off the open market for investors. And the magic comes in really in two ways. Um, the ability to match up what's coming across quickly to investors based on what they want. So Ron likes Streamwood, John doesn't. This broker shouldn't sell Streamwood or show Streamwood stuff to John and whatever your profit profile is. So it's basically having software to funnel the market down and then match it to your investor base. Um, and then the other part is an even playing field. We're gonna talk about that a lot. I work with a lot of different brokers and a lot of different brokers have different points of view where um, they're in the investing business or they have longtime clients where they're preferred, but you're given um, what's left. If you're fortunate enough to be at the top of the list, like we have been in many brokerage offices, you do get access to the top. If as you go down, um, you're basically taking or getting access to deals that may be more marginal or may have more problems. So, so you really, so with the open market listings you've got, you know, the public or MLS access, so you're going to do it yourself manually. Right. Or you've got brokers that work with investors, um, but more of a manual process who maybe aren't leveraging technology, but they're still really great when you're trying to get into specific market areas, right? Because right. those are brokers that are dialed in and really, really have a, a good pulse on that market. And then you have brokers that are leveraging software, so similar to Click Invest. Um, that are leveraging technology that have systems in place and it's more of a high volume game so you're going to be submitting a ton of offers but you're going to be saving a lot of time because you're not having to do all of that manually um, but a point you brought up as well you know when you're working with those groups um just be careful on where you fall on their preferred client list <laughs> yeah and it's it's uh, i'm not uh, trying to infer any brokers are nefarious but that, that's just the reality that's for us with every, everybody we work with, it's about transparency. You just know where you are on that list. And yeah. you just have to understand that you're going to get stuff or deals that have already, you know, been said no to or scooped up from others. Perfect. Okay. So wholesale sources, let's dive, let's dive right in. Cause wholesale is like, that's, that's the word being tossed around everywhere, especially in, you know, on, on TV or books, or I mean, you're scrolling through bigger pockets or some of these sources and it's, everything's about wholesaling. Um, and especially at seminars and whatnot, everybody's talking about wholesaling. So give us your, your take on it. All right, so there is there is a nuance or a difference between off market and wholesaling, but they're always kind of used interchangeably because you really can only typically wholesale an off market deal. So what wholesale means, it's just like any other economic model. It means 
um, I'm buying something to sell to somebody who's going to sell it. So just like um, Champion Spark Plug sells spark plugs wholesale to AutoZone, which are then marked up for a retail price, a wholesaler in our business is, okay, I'm buying a house you know, for 50 cents on the dollar, I'm gonna sell it to a, a, a developer for 65 cents on the dollar who is then gonna renovate it and sell it for retail value. So that's where the word wholesale comes from. Um, off market is typically the only source of deal that can be wholesaled because um, by definition, if it's on market, um, the market forces of, uh, eh, getting too technical here, the people that are buying houses to renovate them will pay the value that the wholesaler was ultimately able to, to spend anyway. So just think of it this way, the wholesaler will sell that same house in Streamwood for 100,000. The MLS will sell that same house in Streamwood for 100,000. The difference is the wholesaler bought that $100,000 house off market for 85,000. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, good. So um, we're gonna talk about wholesalers kind of in two regards. This is if you're buying from a wholesaler uh, versus if you're going to go after off-market deals to either become a wholesaler or renovate them yourself and just have more margin. So this is about um, buying from wholesalers. So now for the, mm, I don't know if negative is the right term, but Almost all the seminars and almost all the groups um, purvey that your entry into real estate investing when you don't have money but you do have time is wholesaling. And it is factually true that getting into wholesaling, chasing off-market deals and selling them um, to investors is a way to lower your need for having money to buy something, but it still takes time and effort. So we'll get to that in the next slide. But my point here is that when you're buying from wholesalers, you have a pool of finger quote wholesalers um, where a majority of them are very inexperienced and don't really have deals or the deals they have don't have a margin for wholesaling. So you have to, uh, you have to build relationships with the right people and understand what their model is and their track record is before um, you start dedicating resources or time to working for, for a wholesaler. I'm sure, I mean, Rosario, you've been in this a long time. I know that Click Invest represents a lot of wholesalers, but there's a vetting process you go through. So maybe you could shed some light on what I'm getting at here. Yeah, so like everything, right? I mean, you brought up about education and books and whatnot. It, it's the easiest thing to sell. Um, you know, become a wholesaler, get into business, no money down and you know within a few weeks you'll get a deal locked up and within a few months you'll recoup whatever you spent on education or whatnot um reality is though to wholesale and to be to wholesale and to be good at it requires a significant amount of money and expertise so we get um we get blasted quite a bit on a weekly basis by deals from wholesalers there's only a handful that we really work with that we vetted that we feel do a good job because at the end of the day if the wholesaler is just trying to pull a fast one or um what's happening a lot of times now too is they're sending you a deal that somebody else sent so you've got two or three wholesalers involved on a deal and it's like hot potato who really has the deal and what i mean is ron gets the deal under contract and wants to assign it out he sends a mass blast to three thousand people i'm a wholesaler i get that email and now I want to make money on it. So I attach 10,000 to it or 5,000 and I send it to my list of 1,000 buyers. And when all is said and done, a lot of those deals end up falling apart because you don't even know who's really got the deal. Yeah, um, it could be the, uh, the daisy chain of bad. Yeah. And, and the other thing is, too, the reason why we vet wholesalers is because a lot of times the numbers aren't right. And it seems like every deal... Just because it's off market, people think it's a great deal, and that is not the case. A great deal, it, it really doesn't matter where it comes from. Um, what makes a great deal a great deal is that the numbers work. You know, there's enough, uh, there's enough of a spread between what you're buying it for and what you're selling it for after you rehab it. So that number in between, you know, you're all in and what you sell it for, that's what matters. And it doesn't matter if it's off market, sheriff sale, on market, whatever. Um, but what a lot of wholesalers do is 
their numbers are skewed. So you buy something for 50,000, you put in 20,000 and you sell it for 150. Well, the chances are the rehab is not 20,000, it's probably 50,000. And chances are the, the after repair value is not 150, it's probably a lot less. Because you're dealing with someone who's newer in the business and, and probably doesn't know how to analyze the deal properly. So um, we only work with a handful and a handful that spend a lot of money a month sending out mailers and that have done enough deals that they know how to analyze a deal properly. So they're not wasting our time, which in turn would waste our client's time if we were to send it out. Yeah, I mean, you make a great point there because I buy um, from wholesalers um, and I buy off market from Click Invest. The one thing that I like about Click Invest is that um, it's that independent opinion of value. You have your systems that underwrite the construction. You have your systems that determine how much construction costs. You have your systems that uh, validate the value and what you could sell it for. And then whether the wholesaler is making 15, 5,000 or 50,000, the acquisition price still stands on its own independent of what his goals are. So as Rosario was saying, um, those you go into the living room or you get a, something off a probate list and you buy it for 80,000 and you realize it's only worth, uh, you know, 130. Well, now you got $50,000 of margin to play with. Um, the only leverage you can pull, you know, let's pull the value up to 160. Let's pull the rehab down from 40 to 20. And now it seems like a good deal. Um, but that wholesaler is conflicted because he's already gotten the property under contract. And the only other numbers he can move are being optimistic on the rehab or being optimistic on how much you can sell for. But with, I think with your system, I, I get to skip a level of diligence when I see it come across in your packages off market because your group is already validated just like it would an on-market pro on, on property. Yeah, and, and what you guys don't see, and, and, and I, I want to move on so we're not yapping about click invest, but um, what a lot of the users don't see is the amount of deals we don't send out because they come to us and we screen them and we're like, it's not a deal. And we've had to tell some wholesalers to stop sending us deals because out of 10, 10 don't work. You know, they're 0 for 10. So it's like, stop, you know, if the integrity is not there, we can't send it out. So, um, yeah, and I'll, I'm I was going to skip the rest of that because it's uh, a lot of it dovetails into here, but it can be a very lucrative source because you can get a better margin because they're off market deals. Yeah. But again, there's a lot to wade through and you have to have um, a broker or your own expertise to make sure that it's really a deal. Uh, in summary, just because it's off market doesn't make it a good deal. It just makes it okay. Did you want, I mean, were there any other points you wanted to hit from this or? Uh, no, the, this, uh, this is another uh, extension on the effort needed. It's like where there's capital, there's always fierce competition for deals. So right now it's really easy to get money for real estate investing. So the open market um, acquisition prices or the price it costs you to buy your project before you renovate it are, has been rising steadily over the last two years and top market, depending on um, your area has not. So the margins are getting um, tighter, smaller. Um, it's just so off, off market deals has less access, better deals and less price, but more effort to get the deal. And then also more effort on your part if you're buying from a wholesaler to vet the deal. Okay. So I, I like those two points. So MLS listings, more access, more demand. Off market deals, less access, better deals, the price, but more effort, right? So you've got to put a lot more effort. What was the price? The yeah, price. it's better price. It's a typo. Okay. All right. Next slide. All right. So we could do an entire weekend seminar on how to <laughs> get off market properties. Um, what I tend to do here is we're going to try to pack one weekend into 10 minutes. Awesome. Um, just so you have an idea uh, or so, so your audience has an idea um, as they're making determinations of whether they want to buy on market or off market or how to blend both. I think it's smart to have both. Um, to understand what's involved in an entire system to buy off market. And it's not, um, it's not really just buy a list from somebody or get a list of an address from probate or get a list even with email addresses and phone numbers. It's, that's really, it, it is where the process starts, but there is a lot of 
systems, work, time, and actual skill uh, in sales, psychology, empathy that has to go into buying off market, particularly when you're meeting, when your uh, your lists ultimately get you into the living room uh, um, to, to make those purchases. So if you look at the very top, it's marketing and lists. That's something that continues and the smaller arrows are an attempt to say that, you know, for this many lists, you get this many buy calls, you get to underwrite this many, which will equate into this many appointment and this many buys. So if you kind of, it would probably look better if it was a funnel. So if you look at, at the top, you have lists and then we'll just go down from there. So you hear lists, there's many places, you know, core logic, there's list aggregators. You can go onto the county website um, and you can get lists of things that are happening that um, point to uh, real estate being in distress. So there's certain combinations of lists. So if you merge um, investor-owned properties with eviction filings, you know that that's a good indicator of vacancy. So I don't want to get too technical, but there's a, a million places you can buy this data. Uh, and some of it's good and some of it's bad. It's all really about the list source and the freshness of the list. But it's just the beginning. So you have to do some dilig diligence on your lists. Um, I'm just going to segue into the done for you um, services. There is a lot of um, systems where you could just log in. I'm going to pay $50 a month or $50 a list or $100. I'm not too familiar with all the pricing. But you can pick a list and then you could pick a postcard and then you, you have your put your company name here. So you have this, okay, I want all houses in Streamwood with 50% equity that are investor owned and I want to send them this postcard and it puts, you know, Property Flippers LLC in there. Well, any of those done for you services or anything in any business, um, specifically real estate, I know firsthand because I've been in it for a while. Um, if there's a way to point click and get results, it's typically too crowded. So those done for you services, they're going to get these yellow postcards. You pick this, you pick that. I'm going way too deep. My point is that I, as an investor, get hundreds of those postcards a month. And most of them show up mm, three or four months after I've already sold the property or they're just all the same. So they become noise and they're, they're really not effective. So um, do you have any questions about that? So, Really interesting because you, you, for I, I mean, I hear this often, um, but you know, I want to do off market. That's, that's, that's the mantra. That's what's being kicked around. I want to do off market. Um, the done for you services. I mean, I've, I've seen them, I've heard of them. Um, but I, you know, I, I imagine the same thing or I thought the same thing that you just spit out where it's probably very crowded and, I mean, similar to when you go to some of these seminars and everybody has the same website template or everybody right. has the same bandit signs and the same this and the same that. It just seems like when you start adding everything up that it can become pretty costly. Um, well, it, it will become costly. I mean, there's, uh, regardless of the effectiveness of what you choose here, um, finding the right list to work, um, I recommend skipping the done for you services because. Um, yeah, I would think. I, I, would I think, think I, I don't. I don't want to. I just don't want to offend anybody. But I, I don't know if the if it's a laziness magnet. But it's uh, people. People flock to the the path of least resistance. So there's gonna. It's just like on open market. There's gonna be more people there on done for you. So you're not you're not not doing anything different, and you just become noise and garbage in somebody's mail. Whereas if you pick a mail system or a list source um, and work that list. Uh, is and the only real the only real criteria is freshness of the list, uh, and then just working that list. Um, you're going to be successful in getting buy calls, it's people to call your line. Um, but as you said, a use done for you. It's going to be the same bandit sign. Real estate investor seeks apprentice. It's going to be the same postcard, the same letter. You got to pick something and send out something that's um, you know not wildly unique, but not the same as everybody else. So it's about freshness. And really um, pick a lane. You know, if it's probate, uh, I wouldn't recommend saying I'm going to do probate, bankruptcy, divorce, evictions. Pick a lane. Pick one or two sources that might marry together, like the uh, the owner, or the non-owner occupant or investor property in an eviction list is usually a real good one. Um, 
and then just be prepared to spend time uh, and money. So, uh, and multiple cycles. So what we learned, uh, cause I started out as a wholesaler 12 years ago. What we learned is that um, people don't pick what month to become in distress or need to sell something at a discount or, um, you know, become, as the industry calls it, a motivated seller. Uh, much like you would ignore tire ads in every Sunday paper for three and a half years until your tires start spinning in the rain, then all of a sudden you see tire ads. Yeah. So you have to pick areas, pick certain characteristics, pick a list, and just continue to hit on a monthly or a, a three-month cycle, whatever makes sense and whatever you can measure as effective, and be prepared when that results in calls. So here, we're done with one-fifth. <laughs> Awesome. Um, I'll speed it up a little bit. No, no, you're, I mean, this is good. Uh, buy calls. So buy calls. So after you do um, commit to a list, you know, measure its effectiveness. So you're, this whole system, um, like any business, you have to measure what your spend is on the marketing lists, how much time you're spending on the marketing list, and then have that number. And then you have to have a dedicated byline. It can't be your cell phone. It can't be this. It has to be something that's trackable and also has a different characteristic. It may forward your cell phone, but it better have some red alert or some contact on there that says, this is a buy call. Because picture if you just spent $1,000 a month for five months on marketing and calls are now starting to come in at just let's use simple math uh, at 50 a month. You're gonna divide those numbers. You're gonna know each one of those calls is gonna be worth about 150 to $200. That's what it's gonna take to get a call into your line depending on how wide your list is. So uh, it, 150 to $200 a call. Yeah, I mean, I worked as a professional wholesaler through a franchise. I know uh, those numbers still kind of hold true and they're closer to 300, but there's you know more of a marketing spend there. If you do it yourself, you can get it as low as 50 to 75, but it's usually gonna be somewhere between 100 and 200, depending on how much you spend on your list. You might okay. get more calls and that buy call cost might be lower, but it might be that you have um, bad data. So you might get a, a bunch more calls, lower call cost, but those calls do not translate into appointments. So you kind of see it's a waterfall. We're just get going from left to right here. Spend on marketing, be ready to take a call and be able to script that call and interrupt the pattern that that person's used to hearing. Um, because just much like the same bandit sign, sorry, yeah, no, no, no. I'm just saying, like the pattern interrupt and all that. I mean, this this section right here. I mean, could end up this this could be a four part series, or actually, we could do five episodes just on these five points. Yeah, there's guys that are great at this that provide this training and weekend seminars in our market. I mean, none of this is um, new or revolutionary. It's proven because it's um, there's two commonalities: public records for real estate and human beings. Nothing's changed. <laughs> this, this system is the same as it was 12 years ago. It's the same as it was 20 years ago. It's gotten more efficient because of technology, but it can, the efficiencies only get you into the living room. And that's where it, you know, you have to differentiate yourself uh, amongst a, a, a group of uh, unsavory characters. And that's what I mean by pattern interrupt. You have to be transparent. You have to tell them what your true motives are. You have to find out what their true problems are. And hopefully, match those things up with something that can solve their problem in terms of an offer price and something that can allow you to make money as a flipper or a wholesaler. And that starts on the buy call. Okay. So we, underwrite, sorry. So, so we have the whole spectrum here because what I, what I want to do is obviously I want to, for the sake of time, I want to start wrapping it up, but um, I know that people can reach out to you directly and I'm sure you'd be willing to dive into more of this stuff with them. Sure. Right? Okay. So, um, we've got very experienced investors that are watching this and we have newer investors that are watching this. Just sum this up. I mean, cause this, this is a lot here, right? Yeah. It's, it's but, pretty meaty. But what's, because what, it, what a lot of these guys want to know is what's the cost? Like what it, from a high level. Okay. What, what can I expect to spend? What's my hit rate? And then what kind of money could I expect to make? Okay, so if, if you want to be a professional wholesaler and your exit is to wholesale to another investor, so you want to get deals under contract off market from a homeowner, your marketing spend is going to have to be higher 
um, because you're going to have to see more prospects to get the margin that you need. And the buy calls, it really starts as you track your marketing spend. Let's just say for argument's sake, the buy calls $150. Then you have your uh, time cost and any uh, administrative cost. If you're doing your own underwriting, and, and I recommend you run your own appointments, it's really a time cost. Um, but there are some costs in their time if you want to measure your time or not. But in reality, what typically happens, if you do this on your own um, in a professional way, and there's guys that do this, you can expect each buy to cost you in just hard marketing costs around $3,200 to $5,000. Okay, for one deal. For one deal. Okay. Yeah. So there's bigger systems. There's franchise systems here in the area where uh, they pool all their marketing resources together, and those guys vary from like six thousand to nine thousand, depending on how good they are in the living room on the call. So, so the guy um, that signs up in marketing, but it can all be garbage if you're not executing correctly from the from the buy call in. And what can you expect? So I mean, so you've got to spend your your. You got to spend at least 10k a month to get three deals. Yeah, when I when I was doing wholesaling as a full time, I, I averaged between eight and ten thousand a month, and that would get me one and a half deals. This was a long time ago. Okay, um, so which, all right, to confirm this, our top guys that we work with, um, one of which spends about twenty five thousand a month, and he's getting, I bet you about four. Yeah, four. I mean, he's he's pretty good so he's like five to six good. um but then we have another guy that spends about 10 gets three a month so it's just it, it always boggles my mind when i see somebody you know especially these uh, the dfy services right the guys that come to me the players um they're gonna spend 15 to twenty thousand dollars a month they do like you said they plot it out they know it's going to be four to six months till they really start turning Mm -hmm. um, but they're willing to invest that because they have the capital in place to do it. What drives me wild is these programs or these systems or whatnot or online, whatever, that are saying, yeah, you know, just start mailing the probate or do this, do that, which is more of this DFY, the do, do, your, uh, do for it yourself, done for, you. yeah. done, for yourself uh, do, done for you services, where it's like, how much do you think you're going to be spending? And you're competing against the guy that's spending, you know, 10 times as much as you and, and is diving into the psychology and knowing how to execute. Yeah, so, I mean, you make a great point there. The, the, your client and even me, um, when I was, you know, had some outrageous spend, if there was a service, because there is one for $150 a month, DFY, merges all the tax records, vacancies, it's the gold mine of data, and pick your letter and postcard, I think this guy probably would have found that service and avoided the 25000 by now. <laughs> Good point. Uh, very good point. There's, so, nothing, there's, there's nothing done for you that is economical. Now, if it was a done for you service and it was $6,000 a month, then maybe it has something there. But you usually get what you pay for. Okay. So you you have been doing this for how many years? Uh, 12 years. First uh, started out as uh, with a wholesale company. I only bought off market. I mean, it was the peak of the market in 2006 where buying off the MLS was scoffed at because it was so fiercely competitive. So when I started in the industry, I started running the system that uh, you're looking at right up here. Uh, okay. And then as the market crashed in 08 and the MLS became the Walmart of uh, cheap investments, I was, I've really focused on the MLS all the way up until now. And you know, it used to be 90% MLS and 10% wholesale, and uh, the percentages change. Uh, but, uh, you know, so I, what are your, what are your, so how many, what's your goal this year? Like, what did you do last year? What's your goal this year? And then just to wrap it up, where's your focus? I'm selfishly promoting myself. Yeah. Uh, much, I mean, you taking your experience and what you know, why aren't you doing wholesale? Well, this year we want to do 25 and those are unit counts. And you got to keep in mind that we do stuff from $350,000 to $900,000. So those fluctuate because we just manage capital units. Okay. Um, so I know what it takes to get back into wholesaling. I usually, uh, I think last year I bought three wholesales. Um, I have relationships with a lot of the professional wholesalers. And then I also get access to the ones off of Click Invest. Um, so was kind of skipped over on the slide. I prefer to buy off the MLS still because there's more knowns and less 
hurdles you have to clear, you know, with the off market stuff, there's group showings, there's high earnest money, there's um, less gates to get out of less and traditional sellers and even REO sellers. We built systems how to exploit um, it gets in the month zero, which I don't know which week we're going to do that. And I think it's next week. Yeah. But um, it's harder to do those things with wholesale. So to answer your question, I'm not planning to actively redeploy the system for my own. Um, right now, I still get calls and still do run appointments, but it's not a majority of my business. Okay, thank you. And um, man, there was something I really wanted to drive home here. Oh, you know, the one myth, I guess, is, you know, a lot of times people go after off market because they're like, well, those are dis the distressed sales. I think mm -hmm. people forget. Um, I was having a conversation this morning with Jeff about it. Uh, the marketplace that has the most bank owned properties, the most probate, the most estate sales, the most short sales, the most pre foreclosures is the MLS. Hands down. Oh, it's the market has always had the most. Yeah, yeah I mean, say that? Invest, and I'm not just here to, you know, be a click invest spokesboy. No, 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 no. And, and, it, and um, it, 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 it cuts through all the noise and does find, you know, the seven to 20 things a day that make, that makes sense. And I'm, and I'm not, and again, not, not to selfishly plug click invest, but the point I'm just trying to get across here to everyone who's looking at off market is just know that you can get those probate, estate sales, short sales, pre foreclosures, REOs, all that stuff is available on the market as well. And the ones that are on the market are actually being sold by people that want to sell today compared to going right. after leads of the same type of product that you've got to filter and work and get in the living room and do all your mailers and do all that. So, yeah, after you um, mail them a lot of times. Yeah, so I think to sum up off market, if you're willing to spend the money, very, very lucrative. But just know you have like with everything, you're going to have you're going to have to spend money and put in time. There's no silver bullet. The guys that are doing it well are making a fortune and a killing, but they're spending a lot. And just just take that in consideration and do your homework before you dive into anything. So um, did you have anything else that you wanted to uh Oh goodness, that's next week. Yeah. So yeah, we'll try to keep that else one under 40 minutes. Touch? Huh? So we'll try to keep that one under 40 minutes. Yeah, right. I'm sorry. It's just so much here. And I know I mean this could have gone for two hours and you this was great. I mean, you you know, we followed the slides, but there's just so much to talk about. Um, so next week, how to leverage the seller's time and money while setting your project up for success using month zero methods, which you are brilliant when you dive into this stuff, because I know you do it for your own stuff, we, we get to experience it here on, on every deal that you get accepted. Um, so I think this is gonna bring a ton of value to guys that are doing deals and 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 trying to start their projects as quickly as possible the yeah. second that property closes. Um, was there anything else you wanna dive into? No, that's it. I mean, there was a lot there. We're probably a little bit too much, but uh, if you have any questions about any of that stuff, stuff or how we can help you uh, implement some of those strategies in your business or if you're thinking about wholesaling or if you're thinking about um, trying to implement an MLS strategy there's a link there uh, to my website would schedule a call we just hop on a call for 30 minutes we'll see uh, if there's any way we can work together awesome so uh, guys I have several clients that that work with Ron and straight up say he's a godsend so um, and enormous amount of integrity honesty transparency transparency all those things are there so reach out to ron if you have questions more about the off-market slides that we went through i'm sorry if we blew through them it's just so much to talk about so if you guys want to talk to ron directly you can reach out to him there um pick his brain he's a great guy and if he can help you out in his business i'm sure he will um look forward to the next session my goodness this is good dude Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it, Ron. And appreciate you having me. We'll have the editor hit it next time. <laughs> you got it, man. All right, guys. Talk to you soon. Thanks for checking this out. Thank you.